Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. Now today the episode of the show will be facts of my death. Well, Dr. Haney's death. Now this morning we have Dr. James Haney on the show. Now mainly you will see him in camera two and him basically doing all this. Now, most of the time, I know that you see me doing the back end of education, but today we would like to see something about you. Now, Dr. Haney, please give me, in a real sense, some of your back end of education, little stuff about you and while we're here today. Very good. Uh, one reason I wanted to uh, deal with this today, Lana, uh, we wanted to call this the uh, facts of my death. And I think that uh, what we've done, uh, we've uh, sort of laid the foundation by having you who uh, will be able to uh, give us information in reference to what happened. Uh, it all goes back to uh, the uh, 15th of January of 2013. Uh, it appeared that uh, my wife was uh, in some distress. She was having uh, some problems with uh, her leg and uh, it was decided to have torn, have torn tissues in, in her leg. leg. And why don't you uh, say, uh, give us some information in reference to how that occurred? Uh, well, on the morning of January 15th, me and you were getting ready to go to school. Well, you were getting ready to take me to school and then you'd go off to work. Now, when I was walking past my grandmother's room, I heard her in distress, I heard her crying. So I went into her room and I said, grandmother, are you okay? And she was like, get James, get James, because y'all will need to have to take me to the hospital because she had torn tissue in her leg. And now, after we had put her in the car, and then we went off to the Summit Hospital in Hermitage, Tennessee. When we arrived at the hospital, um, the doctor started running tests on her, asking her questions, and me and you were just kind of watching and waiting, being pretty nervous. Now, as she went off to her x-ray, uh, I went, hey, Papa, let's go get some hot chocolate, because I'm pretty thirsty. So we went down to the lower level of the hospital and got some hot chocolate. When we came back up, my grandmother was coming back from her x-ray. And now, as I remember, you were sitting in a chair quite like this, and then you crossed your fingers like this and put them to your chest, and you kicked your feet up on the bed, and you went, y'all, I need to take a nap. And so, basically, we were like, uh, I was like, what? Where are you going to take a nap? I mean, he, if you, well, really, you said I need to lay down and take a nap. And I was like, where are you going to lay down? I mean, she ha my grandmother had the bed, y your wife. She had the bed, so I I'm like, where would he lay down? And then, at that moment, your, your mouth opened, but nothing came out. And then your eyes rolled to the back of your head, and you started foaming at the mouth. So after that, you, you started shaking, like, shaking, like you were, like, freezing, shaking, like you were scared and freezing all at the same time. And so I shook you. I was like, Papa, Papa, wake up, Papa, because you weren't moving anything. Your mouth was open. You were foaming at the mouth, and your eyes were completely white. You were just shaking. So I was like, Papa, wake up, wake up, Papa. And then after that, I flew out the door. I basically ran out the door, and I went, we need nurses. We need doctors. My grandfather, he's having a heart attack. Help us, help us. And so they ran in back into the room, and then there was this one nurse, and she had stopped in the room and said, oh, my God. And so let me uh, in interject here, Lana, uh, during this first segment, because at this point I had literally lost my consciousness. I was no longer able to uh, understand anything, and not only had I lost my consciousness, but when the doctors from across the hall reached the examination room, they found my wife still on the bed, but at the same time they found me unconscious and in a chair. In a chair, and they immediately put onto the end of my finger a machine that indicated that, that would uh, read your pulse, pulse on a machine that was about over there, over to it the was, right it, it of me. It flat out. It, it, it flat went, out indicated it I did not a have a pulse. Line, like you were not alive. Like because a lot of person, everybody has a pulse. If you're alive and walking and breathing, you have a pulse. I have a pulse. You well, at the time you didn't have I a pulse, but have you a, now have a pulse. Nor did I have a heartbeat as we entered this as uh, section. First se end of this first segment. As every living person does. And, and then I, I, I have, I've not only had I lost my consciousness, but I'd also lost my pulse, and I had lost my heartbeat. And so the issue for the next 13 minutes was dealing with getting me back into life. And so it took 13 minutes. And so we're going to take this uh, first commercial break, 
And I appreciate you opening this for us because I think that you gave us some good information in reference to it. But when we come back, what I want you to do is to pick up at the point where I literally lost my uh, consciousness, and your my heartbeat. pulse, and my heartbeat, and some of the activities that only you were able to uh, see because uh, everybody else was rushing around. And we'll be back with you following this very, very short uh, commercial break. segment of the show now